Hello everyone, welcome to the last week of 2021 and I hope this week turns out to be memorable for you. Now let's walk through the last question of weekly contest 273 as promised. If you found any of the above three questions difficult, we have already provided video solutions for it. I am attaching the link in the description below. So please do give it a shot. Now let's come to the point, recover the original array. Lead code 2122, recover the original array. So in this question, let's walk through and let's try and understand what all the question is trying to explain to us. There's a girl named Alice and she has an array consisting of n positive numbers. Also, she randomly picks up a positive integer k and creates two new arrays using it, the lower array and the higher array. Each element of the lower array is equal to the element minus k. Higher array is equal to the current element plus k. Unfortunately, she loses all the three arrays. However, she remembers the integer that were present in the arrays lower and higher, but not the array each element belongs to. What we need to do? We need to help Alice recover the original array. What we are given in the question? We, the question says we are given an array of size 2n, where exactly n integers belong to the lower array and the remaining n belongs to the higher array. What we need to do? We need to tell what is the original array with which she actually started the complete process. Here they have provided the example. I'll be talking about these examples and way to build the algorithm by the presentation. So let's quickly hop on to the PPT. Recover the original array, lead code 2122. It's a hard level question on lead code and I also feel the same. So let's try to extract the maximum out of the question. Let's try to draw the equations that were formed from the question. We have an original array and let's assume there were only three elements A, B and C and we have a positive integer value K. We created a lower array and the elements would be something like this A minus K, B minus K, C minus K. That of the higher array would be equal to A plus K, B plus K, C plus K. Now what we will do? We will reverse engineer the algorithm. We have to think in the reverse direction because what is given to us in the question? We are given six elements the combination of lower and the higher array and we don't know whether a particular element belongs to the lower array or the higher array. So what we will do, we'll try to reverse engineering things here. Let's assume that we have an element E that maps to A minus K, E dash maps to B minus K, E double dash maps to six e C minus K, A triple dash maps to A plus K. These are the part of the higher arrays. These three are the part of the lower arrays. If 4 times dash maps to b plus k, e 5 times dash maps to c plus k. And in total we have 6 elements, the value of n turns out to be 3, where these 3 belongs to the lower array, these 3 belongs to the higher array. And what we will do? We will subtract e from all the other elements that are present in the array. So what we will get? a minus k minus a minus k gives us 0. e dash minus e would be equal to b minus k minus a plus k. So a, k and k will get cancelled. What is left is b minus a. E, e double dash minus e is equal to c minus k. E triple dash minus e is equal to 2k. a plus k minus a plus k will give us 2k. And e four times dash minus e gives us b minus a plus 2k. E five times dash minus e gives us c minus a plus 2k and the interesting part here is using this we can identify the value of k once we have the value of k we can re-device the original array so the problem reduces to identifying the appropriate value of k and how are we going to do that so let's walk through an example where i'll tell you once we have this differences array created how can we reverse engineering and revalidate the original array. So let's take the example. We have the input areas 2, 10, 6, 4, 8, 12. And what I will I do? I will create the differences array, which actually signifies the double difference array because the value that we have got after subtracting E triple dash minus E is double difference. So let's call it DD. Let's go ahead and identify the double difference, the value of 2K and it would be equal to let's subtract 2 from all the other elements also i'll perform the sorting operation first so we have 2 4 6 
8 10 12 so that all of them are in the increasing order so let's subtract 2 from all the rest of the elements so 4 minus 2 gives us 2 6 minus 2 gives us 4 8 minus 2 gives us 6 10 minus 2 gives us 8 12 minus 2 gives us 10 so this is the updated array now what will i do i will use each of the value that we have computed as a possibility of k and we will try to build the original array if we are successful in building the original array that means the value of k that we have chosen is correct if we are unsuccessful in building the original array then we will move on to the next possibility of k so let's start the first one that we see is 2 so let's use 2 as the double difference value which is nothing but 2k now what will i do i'll create a map and it will store the frequency of all the elements that are present in the initial input array now we have this input array and we have the possibilities for the double difference the value of 2k and let's create the map corresponding to the input array that was given in the example the frequency is 2 is 1 4 is 1 6 is 1 8 is 1 10 is 1 12 is 1 and the double difference value that we have used under consideration right now is equal to 2 so let's get started what we need to assure that we need to assure that a minus k and a plus k should both be present in this input array then only we can say that a is there how can we do that so let's pick up the first element uh, we have the first element as 2 so if we add uh, the double difference to 2 what is the double difference the double difference is 2 right now and let's hypothetically assume that this corresponds to a minus k a minus k is equal to 2 the double difference value that we have is 2 so we'll add 2k to it and 2 plus 2 gives us 4 so a plus k is equal to 4 and this value should be present in the array let's check whether it is present in the array or not it is present in the array then we can uh, once we validate that both the elements a minus k and a plus k are part of the array which happens to be in this case what do we do we so look out for the possibility of a and how can we identify that we have a minus k as 2 we know the double difference as 2k so let's divide the double difference by 2 the double difference gets divided by 2 2k by 2 gives us 1 so a minus k is 2 and if we add k to it what we will get we will get 3 so a minus k plus k would give us 3 so 2 plus 1 gives us 3 and a becomes equal to 3 so the first element that we identified happens to be 3 pretty straightforward and what do we do next we reduce its frequency to 0 since we have consumed these two elements so, so this gets updated to 0 this gets updated to 0 let's proceed ahead and let me just change the color of pen for the next iteration next we see is 6 and let's assume that the element the current element happens to be equal to b minus k is equal to 6 and what do we do we add double difference to it so we add 2k to it once we add 2k what is the value that we get b min b plus k happens to be equal to 8 we need to check whether 8 is part of the array or not is a part of the array the answer is yes 8 is present 6 is present both are present then we can say that a b it should also be that the current possibility for b is part of the answer and how will we identify b b minus k is equal to 6 so we'll add k to it k is 1 so b minus k plus k is equal to 6 plus 1 which is 7 so 7 becomes part of the answer and we add 7 to it once we have added 7 to the answer we reduce the frequency of these two elements by 1 and these gets updated to 0 let's move on for the next iteration and next we see is 10 so let's assume that the current element happens to be equal to c minus k c minus k is happens to be 10 what do we do we add double difference to it so 2k gets added and 10 plus 2 happens to be equal to 12 
what we need to check we need to check whether a minus k and a plus k are both part of the map it is 10 and 12 are both part of the answer that simply helps us identify that c is present in the output array c should be present as the part of the output array how do we identify c c minus k is equal to 10 c minus k plus k and how will we identify the value of k we know the double difference is 2 so we divide it by 2 and we get 1 k the value of k is 1 so c minus k is 10 10 plus 1 gives us 11 so the answer becomes 11 we simply add 11 to the output array so we have identified a as 3 b as 7 c as 11 and what do we do next we reduce the frequency by 1 1 for both of these values because we have consumed those elements now are we left with any element in the map no the frequency of the complete map has become equal to 0 and how many elements have we identified we have identified three elements that should be part of the original array how many elements were present in the given array there were six elements uh, does the rule uh, of two into the size of the array that you have just built is it equal to six yes it is equal to six three into two happens to be equal to six that means we have successfully built the array you can take any other value of double difference four six 8, 10 and you won't be able to build this complete original array using any other difference value and this is what we need to do for each possibility of double difference value we need to build our original array so I'll talk about it more in the coding section and I'll exactly do the same steps as I have talked the first and the foremost thing I go ahead and sort the input array then I create a double difference array that will store all the possibilities for 2k. I iterate through the input array and I calculate the double difference double k which is equal to nums minus nums at the 0th index. If my double uh, 2k or double k value happens to be greater than 0 and is even in nature then only I'll go ahead and add it to my double difference array because difference to 2k should is always even in nature. Let's proceed ahead. Next I go ahead and I use each possibility of double difference to find out whether I am able to recreate the original array or not. If I am able to recreate the original array and if the size of the array that I have recreated happens to be equal to the input size the nums dot length by 2 then I add it to my answer that because I have found a possibility for it. I recast the array created into integer primitive type and I return it as a final answer. Otherwise, once I am once there is no such possibility, I simply return an empty array as the answer. Now comes the question, how are we actually building the original array using the double difference value and the nums array that is given to us. So let's check that. So the return type of this array is the original array. Uh, we pass in the input nums array and the double difference value. What do I do? I create a map wherein it will store the frequency of all the elements that are present in the input array, nums array. I have created the answer variable that will store my original array. Let's start the iteration and let's check whether a plus k and a minus k are part of the map or not so this the current element signifies a plus a minus k and nums plus double difference will signify a plus k so it's something like this a minus k plus double difference which gives us a plus k and if that is the case we we can see that both the elements are part of the map then what do I do? I reduce the frequency of both of them by one by one and I also add the current value of a into my answer array, the original array, nums plus double difference by two. So how do we get this? A, nums is equal, num is equal to a minus k and we add double difference by two to it. So 2k by two gets added and this becomes a. 
once i am done with this i simply return the answer array so let's submit this up accepted this brings me to the end of recover the original array and end of the challenge i hope i made sense to you guys and you thoroughly enjoyed all the four videos i want to thank you guys for the support that you have shown here also in case you like today's video please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question